Hey, what's going on, everyone? I want to thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Just My Opinion Reviews. I really do appreciate it. And just like I did last year at the end of 2017, I am doing the exact same thing this year, end of 2018, with my best, worst, and favorite list of 2018. Uh, this one right here that you're watching, you saw the thumbnail, you saw the title. This is actually, actually, I don't even know what my title, uh, my thumbnail is going to be. So this is going to be like the uh, top 15 favorite movies of mine of 2018. You may be saying to yourself, well, Brandon, why are you doing your top 15? You should do your top 10. Well, you're going to get my top 10 because it's going to be here. You're just going to get an extra five as well because there were so many films that I did enjoy this year. Now, I did say best, favorite, and worst. Now, uh, this is my top favorite films. That is different from top best films. What do you mean? This is what I mean. My fa top, my favorite is my biased opinion. It is, it is a more subjective approach. Now, all films are subjective, meaning that just because I like something, you may not, and vice versa. You know, and that's perfectly fine. So there may be some films on my list that you uh, may not agree with, that you disagree with, and that's perfectly fine. There are also a number of films that I did not see this year, so I can't talk about them or put them on my list if I haven't seen them. So I have my list of uh, 10 to 15 right here. Very excited to talk about it, and I just want to also just stress this so you understand. There is a difference between best and first. Best is a more objective approach. Um, my best list are films that I uh, feel that should be best picture uh, contenders because the story was great and it also just had great acting again my subjective opinion is just going to be films that are just my own biased opinion I don't care about plot I don't care about story and things like that I just had a, a ton of fun with it that's what it means on the surface but for me personally I do care about plot and I do care about story and acting and effects and all that I'm not just gonna be putting on here a bunch of guilty pleasures no these films on my favorite list are at the very least an 8.5 out of 10 and higher but these are just list of films that I can just they're my favorite I can watch over and over and over again if there is a plot point or anything like that that just doesn't make sense, I really don't care. I just have fun with it, you know. So it, it is, it is a, um, it is an objective approach as well. But the subjectivity comes uh, before anything else. So enough with all that rambling. Let's go ahead and get to uh, my number fifteen favorite film of two thousand eighteen, and that is also a surprise for me. And that is Instant Family. Um, it came out November 16th. It is a comma, uh, comma, comma, a comedy drama. It was uh, written and directed by Mr. Sean Anders. Um, I'm a decent fan of his. Um, I don't know him too much. He did uh, Sex Drive, Daddy's Homes 2 and 1. Uh, that's my boy. This film right here is loosely based on a true story that had to deal with him, uh, the director, Sean Anders. And um, it stars Mark Wahlberg and uh, Rose Byrne. And what it's about is is just a couple find themselves you know not they haven't had any kids and they want to adopt foster kids and this is not just a comedy there had a lot of heart to it um it was a lot of realness to it it was a lot of things that i just thought i i, I did not expect had some pretty good performances too um it's a favorite of mine i don't know i mean i may buy it or something like that but it is something that i can watch uh over and over again Coming in at number 14 is a film that I think a lot of people just forgot about. It came out January of, uh, of this year, January 12th, and that is Paddington 2. I love this bear so much. It is this a cute, cuddly bear. On the surface, it looks like, okay, I would not be interested in this uh, film at all. This looks childish. No. Uh, I mean, they have childish jokes, but uh, at the same time, they do have a lot of adult themes as well. I think the effects with the bear uh, Paddington is uh, phenomenal. It really looks like a real bear on screen, photo realistic CGI. The writer and director is Paul King, and it's just a, it's just a great film. Um, you know, just about a bear trying to live his life in England and you know be loved by family. I recommend it. I love the first Paddington, and I love Paddington too. All right, guys, coming in at number 13 is a film that I just recently reviewed, and that is If Bill Street Could Talk, written and directed by Brother Barry Jenkins. I love this film right here. Also, let me go ahead and say this, guys. 
there may be also films that are on my top favorite list of 2018 that are also on my best list of 2018. So I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that. But coming in at number 13 is If Bill Street Could Talk. I said in my review, and you can go check that out. This film right here is a textbook example of black love. Um, it's a type of love story that I have never seen before while simultaneously being infused uh, with white racism and white supremacy and things that, you know, took place uh, in the 70s. I love this film. I thought the soundtrack was fire. I will be buying this film when it comes out on Blu-ray, 4K and all that good stuff. I love the love of the couple. I love the love of the family. I just love the whole film. And I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend it and thank you all. Thank all you guys to take a chance and go check it out. And that is number 13, If Bill Street Could Talk. Now, coming in at number 12 is a film that I don't think anybody is going to have on their list. But I put it on mine because I had a lot of fun with it. And everybody crapped on it, saying that it was a bloody joke and it was stupid and it was this and it was that. And it was just comical. But I had a great time. And that is Shane Black's Predator movie that came out this year. I think I gave this film like a 9 or 9.5. I don't understand why. I mean, it is a silly movie. It is a goofy movie. But at the same time, I feel that they did take it seriously as well. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I really, I haven't seen Predator 2. And a lot of people were saying I need to go see that. I don't know why I just said that. It didn't have really anything to do with this movie. But the Predator film was a lot of fun. I mean, it was a great action film. Um, I liked the story of it. Like I said, it had some goofy and silly elements. But that's okay because I'm a goofy and silly guy. And I just had fun with it. So Predator, that is coming in at number 12. All right, coming in at number 11 on my top favorite list of 2018 is a film by the title of A Quiet Place. I uh, love this film. I remember when the trailers first came out, uh, I was like, man, this looks stupid. I don't think I'm going to be interested. How in the world are you going to have a, 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 a suspenseful movie when no one can talk? Well, I was wrong, and I'm glad I was wrong because this film was amazing. Um, the director is John Krasinski. Um, the another actress in this film is Emily Blunt, who plays um, I, they are married and it's just a great film. A lot of people talk about how they want them to to be uh, Mr. and Mrs. Fantastic and the Fantastic Four. I would love that. But this is a, a it's a post apocalyptic world where a family is forced just to live in silence or they will be uh, eaten by monsters. And uh, it's just them just trying to survive and all the weird contraptions and devices they have to come up with so they can make it through each day. It's very clever. It's very thought out, uh, very provoking. It's a super mystery thriller. I loved it. Um, it, it, it. This is something that you really want to see in the theaters if you can. I remember you can hear a pin drop when I was in the movie theater. No one wanted to talk. And that's just the type of audience engagement that I, I, I love to be a part of. This is a fun film. Um, it's something that I can watch over and over and over again. Um, I, I loved it. I didn't buy it yet, but I will be buying it. You know, I, I do have a budget like everybody else. I can't just buy everything. You know what I'm saying? If it's a comic book movie, you know, I probably can. But uh, I really did enjoy this movie. I think you will, too. So that is why um, A Quiet Place comes in at number 11. All right, now, guys, we are now in the top 10. See, I told you don't get my top 10. This is my top 10 favorite films of 2018. I remember this snuck up on me. I didn't even know about it. It was, uh, I think it was, I think it was on my subscriber, Cheryl. I think if it, if, it, if I'm wrong, please forgive me. But I think it was you, Cheryl, that recommended this film. Uh, you told me to react to this in like another video. And I was like, okay, what is Upgrade? And then I saw the trailer. I was like, oh, snap. This is off the goddamn chain. You know what I'm saying? I love me some martial arts action, hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, you know, especially when you're up close. I love that. And this film, Upgrade, uh, had all of that. It's written and directed by Leigh Whannell. It came out earlier this year, June 1st of 2018. And when they have all these martial arts elements and things like that, they mix it in with like future cybernetic technology, um, uh, artificial intelligence, AI, and all that good stuff. And it was phenomenal. The ending was almost disappointing to me, but I liked it. They had a nice sense of heart and touch. Um, towards the end, especially like with the mother of the main protagonist in this film. It, it was nice. I don't even think it was that long. It was like yeah, an hour and 40 minutes. It was just great hand-to-hand -hand action. Um, great direction uh, by the director. Um, and Logan Marshall Green, who call, people call him the broke Tom Hardy. Uh, he's a great actor to me. I liked him in the... Uh, I like No, I didn't like that movie, but I liked him in... 
the Alien Covenant movie, but it's just a great film. I I loved it. Great story. Kind of something that I've never seen before. And uh, I will be buying this too uh, when I get some more money. <laughs> All right, guys. Coming in at number nine is a headbanger man when i saw this in the theater i was jamming uh this group is fantastic and i don't even know much about them uh but that is bohemian rhapsody now there was a lot of controversy uh with this film because um you know people hold the it's based on uh queen uh, the band Queen that was uh, doing her thing in like the ni the 1980s. They had one of the best performances, uh, live concert performances of all time at Live Aid in 1985. And one of the countries in Africa, I can't remember exactly. Uh, I said controversy because Brian Singer was um, directing this. But then, you know, he had it was reported that uh, he was sick. Well, not he was sick, but a family member was sick, so he wasn't showing up to sit. So he was fired or whatever. I don't know. And somebody else came in. Um, but it's loosely based on the true story of Queen. The controversy also comes because a lot of people say it's not 100% true. But besides all that, I enjoyed it. Remy Malik um, played uh, Freddie Mercury, and I think the performance was great. One of the better performances of this year. He really did give all he could to that role, and it showed on screen. I was jamming my head in the theater. I loved all the music. Uh, I was a big fan of We Are The Champions in the 90s when I was growing up, and that song was introduced to me, too. Um, you know, in the Mighty Ducks franchise, I love that franchise. It still holds a special place in my heart. So especially when they played that song and this thing, I was just like, We Are The Champions. <laughs> Y'all don't know I could sing. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I am just joking. But no, this film was a lot of fun. It was a great story, great acting, uh, great storytelling, great performances. I, I really did enjoy this. I remember my mom, she's like, yeah, I'm not going to see it. I was like, no, mom, you need to see this movie. It's fantastic. Um, I, I loved it. So that is why Bohemian Rhapsody is coming in at number nine. All right, guys, coming in at number eight and... Yeah, now that I look at it, oh, I, I put no, sir. I do want to switch this order. Coming in at number eight uh, is a film that, I mean, I was going to say these films just keep getting better and better, but that's not necessarily true. Uh, but it's still a great film. And that is Mission Impossible Fallout. Right, where we get? Where, where, <laughs> excuse me. There we go right there. Got that film right there on uh, Blu-ray 4K. Actually got this for a Christmas gift. Um, so you can possibly tell when I'm shooting this right here, but I have Mission Impossible Fallout right here It was written and directed. No, it wasn't written, but it was directed by Christopher McCurry He's also the gentleman that um, directed the last Mission Impossible film and But Mission Impossible 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I mean they just keep getting better and better and better and then you know Mission Impossible 5 and 6 kind of um, Kind of plateaued for me, but I still enjoyed the hell out of them this out of them this film right here was actually shot with IMAX cameras so when you're watching it some of the action scenes uh, when they have when you're watching it at home and they have the the black bars at the bottom of the top of the screen uh, when the IMAX scenes come those disappear and the screen expands and it is it is really a nice experience at home and while you watch it in the theater but these films right here I mean they're just crazy fun I mean it the IMF and impossible mission force like seriously the missions that they have to accomplish is just freaking impossible you're just like how in the world are you going to do this but tom cruise and his team ving rames and everybody they always come through and save the day and save the world and this is wildly entertaining it is a fun ride i really don't want them to stop making these films because they're just great and they they make money and they're good so um you know, i love these films and that is why mission impossible fallout comes in at number eight all right, guys, uh, coming in at number seven on my top favorite films of 2018. It was a film written, directed by Mr. Steven Spielberg, one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. And that is Ready Player One. Man, if this was uh, filmed in IMAX, this probably would have been the, one of the best movies I've seen forever. But oh, my goodness gracious, guys, the pop culture references in this film was just freaking stellar phenomenal. I mean, like this is a, a true dream come true for any geek 
of anything in the past 30 to 50 years. I mean, they threw every Easter egg imaginable in this film. And not only that, it just looks beautiful. The, 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 I'm going to say the score. But the music was good in this, but the, the effects in this thing were just like top notch. I mean, they really got every digital artist they possibly could on the planet and put them together to make a beautiful film. The story was great. I love the characters, everything. This was just a fun movie, something that I can watch over and over and over again. And especially at the end when he did that Hadouken. Y'all know what I'm talking about if you're a friend of that franchise. But this is a great film. I loved it. And I think he will too. Uh, Ready Player One, Blu-ray, 4K, right there, baby. Number seven, top t top 10 uh, favorite of 2018. All right. We are moving uh, quite along. Now, coming in at number six, I do not have this film uh, ready to show you because it is still in theaters right now and that is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Um, it was directed by Pop Perichetti, Peter Ramsey, and Rodney Rothman. And uh, it's a great film, guys. We have Miles Morales. Of course, I can relate to this young brother. He's black and Hispanic. Of course, I can't relate to the Hispanic side, but I can relate to the black culture side. And just the way he was just singing in the trailer. I don't know the words, and he didn't either in the movie. You know, <laughs> like we all do that sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And just without them, just like black, 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 which is nothing wrong with that anyway. I was just really able to relate to him. And you can just see like just little nods, Easter eggs of, of just random mannerisms throughout the whole film that I can just uh, relate to. Besides that, I'm a big fan of Spider-Man. OK, so we got Spider-Man in this too, a perspective we've never seen before and multiple Spider-Mans. I mean, how can you lose with that? You really just can't. The effect that Sony put I heard right now that they're trying to actually patent that technology and it was a great technology I can't get mad at them for that those effects and things like that are something I've never seen before the way the film broke the fourth wall and like you know at one point in time they would throw something to hit him in the head and like the captions that would like pop out like this is a food or a donut or something just randomly when they would talk to the the comic book bubbles would pop out I mean it was just something that I've never seen before I love this film I cannot wait so I can buy this on blu-ray 4k i know it's gonna look beautiful on my display uh when i get it at home but you know it was just a great film i loved it and that is spider-man into the spider-verse coming in at number six okay guys well now we are in the last five the top my top five favorite films of 2018 and coming in at number five is a film that I was actually late to the party. Everybody got to see this before I did, but that's okay because I was actually able to pay to see this film. I was able actually to contribute to the box office and give them my dollars. Uh, but let me pull this up real quick. I should have had it ready, but you know, hey, sometimes I just be freestyling. Just I want to give you all the info I possibly can. But this film right here, coming in at number five, is uh, writ is directed by Mr. George Tillman Jr. Uh, believe it or not, it's a black guy, and uh, he directed Soul Food, Men of Honor, and Notorious. I loved all those films. I, I'm I'm sad that I did not know of his name. Uh, prior to this i mean i should have been paying more attention but like i said that is the hate you give i have i don't own it because i don't i think it may be still at the dollar theater right now and came out on blu-ray i ain't bought it but oh my gosh this film right here was super duper serious amandala steinberg uh she fantastic actor actress excuse me uh as the main protagonist of this film of course this deals with racism and white supremacy i love this film to death it spoke to me on so many different ways because uh with the good and the bad it was so realistic to me because i mean i love everybody for the most part you know what i'm saying you know even in my community of course but even in my community you have some people that i still just cannot stand and of course i cannot stand the races and that this film dealt with both sides you know what i'm saying i mean even though people that you love just do things that you just cannot stand and i don't I'm, i know i'm being extremely vague go check out my review for this film i don't i don't want to review this film right here but this was given the climate that we're living in right now the political climate this uh this film right here just speaks volumes uh it is a true eye opener and uh just i like how they compressed 
all of these themes and elements of like racism, white supremacy and justice and all that into one film, one two hour film to really paint the picture of uh, black people's plight and people of color's plight and things that they have to go through. Um, there was a ton of African-American DOS in this film, Des Descendants of Slaves, uh, except for the necessarily the main actress. And I talked about that more in my my review, but I love this film. I, I support it. Uh, Regina Hall did a great job. Anthony Mackie, Russell Hornsby did a great job. Uh, Common. Uh, I mean, this film had a fantastic cast and everybody did a phenomenal job. It is doing horrible at the box office right now. It's only made $32 million worldwide with a $23 million budget. So guys, without even doing the math, it's blatantly obvious that this film lost money and that frustrates me. So please support the film now if you can. Um, and, you know, I, I want George Tillman to get work and he's not going to get work if his films are losing money. But let's try to keep it positive, you know, even though I did not myself. But that's why this film right here, The Hate You Give, is coming in at number five. Please go check out my review for this film. Coming in at number four in my top 10 most favorite films of 2018. We got it right here. And that is Incredibles 2 right here. Blu-ray 4K, baby. Man, it was 15 years that we had to wait on the sequel and it was uh, I'm glad that we finally got it it was well worth the wait please don't make us wait that long for an Incredibles part three but I don't I mean I don't understand why so alone the first one made money and it was a critical I mean I understand why that you know Brad Bird the director he wanted to do other things uh, but I think I like the Incredibles 2 even more than the first film and I love that film I mean it was it was fantastic I mean the this this is for kids this is for adults this is for everybody I really don't understand how anyone cannot like this film. I mean, all films are subjective. I'm, I'm just saying that I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody is not going to be in love with it. But I did. Only thing that I did I like more in the first film was the villain. But everything else in this film, I think, surpassed the first one with the effects, the action, the comedy, just the, the relationship between the family and the way they got along. I love how they bicker and argue in the family. It, it's just a great film. I really did enjoy that. And that is why The Incredibles 2 is coming in at number four on my top 10 favorite of 2018. All right, guys. So we are down to the final three, uh, final three films of 2018. And I bet some of y'all was like, Brandon, why haven't you listed this film yet? <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. It's so much fun. All right, guys, coming in at number three, I don't have it on Blu-ray 4K right now because it is still in theaters. But I love the first film and I love the, sec the sequel even more. And it is Creed 2, baby. Yes, Creed 2. Uh, starring Mr. Michael B. Jordan, Mr. Eric Killmonger, Mr. Uh, Mr. Creed. I said Mr. Creed. I love this film. You know, we got Sylvester Stallone coming back as Rocky, of course. Uh, this was not directed by uh, Brian, not Brian, uh, Ryan Coogler. Uh, this is being directed by Steeple, Stephen Capel Jr. And he did a fantastic job. Like I said, I think I like Creed 2 better than the first one. And I love Creed 1. But the training montages in this thing, like when at the end when he was in the desert, super fire. The uh, Ivan Drago, um, um, not Ivan Drago. His son, Ivan Drago is Dolph Lundgren. What, what was his son's name? I forgot. I got it. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? I got it. Victor Drago, played by Florian, Fl Florian Montanu, uh, uh, Montane, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm uh, I'm pr pretty sure I am. But it was freaking fantastic. You got Russell Hornsby in this thing as well. Uh, I really did feel, I, I mean, and the fight in the middle, I, I didn't know how, I mean, some of this stuff was predictable, but some of it wasn't. I really did not know how it was going to end. I like everything with Tessa Thompson and her relationship and, you know, with the baby and things like that. I like the argument between Michael B. Jordan and Sylvester Stallone. I like Felicia Rasai, you know, but mama checking her son. I love so much in this film right here. Please go check it out. I definitely will be buying this. I mean, the action in this, the, you know, Michael B. Jordan, like seriously, guys, like, I have been inspired just to like train my ass off from seeing this movie. I already had that in my, you know, to do list. You know, okay, Brandon, you know, how do you want to take things to the next level? But like, seriously, like, real talk. But Creed 2, I love this film. My review for it is up on the channel. Please go take, please go check it out. It, it is a phenomenal film. All right, guys, we're down to the final two films of 2018 that are my favorite. And coming in at number two 
is Black Klansman, baby. I got it right there on Blu-ray. I don't. I just didn't feel like buying this on 4K. I didn't see the uh, the need to. But man, hold up! This film right here is uh, written and directed by um, by uh, Spike Lee. It's, it's a Spike Lee joint. Uh, producer of this was also. Um, uh, Jordan Peele, who did Get Out and is doing Us right now. I believe Jordan Peele, he just, I don't think he just was an associate or an executive producer. I think he was like a producer, producer to where he had a lot of creative control and decision making power. Uh, I'm so glad that he uh, cast John David Washington in this film, um, Denzel Washington's son. Uh, I love this film right here. The part where they were talking about double consciousness spoke to me. The speech at the very beginning uh, with Corey Holcomb. Uh, was I forgot the gentleman he was playing? I, I really I, I I forgot. My I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, but the, those those floating heads that really spoke to me. Everything in this film spoke to me. I love this film. I got it right here. I can I don't watch this about three times already at home after I watched this thing. Only thing that well uh, the movie is great. The special features on this disc suck. I mean, it really are any. There's no commentary, which is disappointing. But it's still a great film, guys. This is it comes in at number two for my top uh, number two favorite film of 2018. All right, guys, we are down to it. The final one, my favorite film of 2018. Um, some of you guys probably already know what it is. Um, it may uh, create some controversy, some division. I don't really care. I'm a little exaggerating when I said that right there. But to be honest with you guys, uh, I couldn't make a decision on number one. So there's a tie. Okay. I still cannot decide. I'm looking at them both right now. I still cannot decide which film I like more. I mean, gosh, it's just too difficult for me. I've tried. I've been back and forth. I still to this day, I cannot determine which one I like more. Um, it, it's just too hard. So uh, it is a tie. Come in, so coming in, it's two films I'm going to list. And if you don't like me tying them, hey, get over it. But uh, the first one is uh, Marvel's The Avengers Infinity War. I don't know. I'm holding it right now, and I forgot the title of the film. That is number one uh, or part one of this. And coming in uh, and number one again, the tie. Of course, it's Black Panther, baby. And I got it right there on Blu-ray 4K, and I also have it on uh, 3D. Um, if you have a 3D television, they don't sell this in the States. You have to order online overseas. But if you have a 3D television, I strongly suggest you buy this in 3D because they have the IMAX ratio for this film is on this on the 3D disc. And you don't have to watch it in 3D. You can still watch it in 2D if you have a 3D film to see the IMAX ratio. If you don't have a 3D TV and you still want to watch the IMAX ratio, um, it won't work on your TV. But there is a way that you can convert the file, convert the disc, and put it on a blank Blu-ray to watch it. I've done it myself, and it's freaking amazing. But we got Black Panther, and we got Avengers Infinity War right here. Uh, two of my favorite films of all of 2018. Of course, Black Panther. I mean, come on. it's a com These are comic book films. I mean, uh, I mean, blackity, blackity, black all over this culture, all over this. I can relate to it. Killmonger is my f I don't even want to call Killmonger a villain. I, I really don't. I'll just call him the antagonist, okay? Because I, I really don't even feel the film was villainizing him. They really get they gave him a valid reason to be upset. I just did not necessarily agree with his handling of the situation. Only things I didn't agree with Killamonger was killing children and going on the offensive. That's only everything else, bro. I'm with you right there. You know what I'm saying? Black liberation. All this is bull crap. I I I'm <laughs> I feel you, my brother. I, I, I like seriously, you know. I, I feel you. I feel you, bro. I really do. I'm gonna go and bust out in tears right now. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't agree with killing children. I don't agree with uh, going on the offensive. I'm a strong advocate of self defense. Uh, I mean, the costumes in the film were just like top notch. The song, the soundtrack, you know, the acting, the performances was stellar. You know, I, I, I could nitpick the film, but we're not going to do that right now. And then when you get to Avengers Infinity War, Thanos, I mean, one of the baddest villains. Uh, yeah, he is. A, he wanted to murder the whole universe. Uh, but the performance was great. The effects was great. Uh, I mean, I love everything about it. I remember geeking in the movie theater when I saw this on IMAX, uh, doing some of the action scenes all throughout. Just like, oh, my God. You know, going like that. I mean, these are my favorite films of this year. I can watch both of these over and over and over again. This is like this, this, 
met all, nearly met all of my expectations and so did Avengers Infinity War. It was such a build up to those films right there and it was just phenomenal. I love them all. But um yeah guys, that is my uh that's my list for 2018. I hope you enjoyed it. So let's recap real quick. Coming in at number 15 is uh Instant Family. Coming in at number 14 is Paddington 2. 13 is If Bill Street Could Talk. 12 is Predator. 11 is A Quiet Place. 10 is Upgrade. Number 9 is Bohemian Rhapsody. Number 8 is Mission Impossible uh, Fallout. Number 7 is Ready Player One. Number 6 is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, number 5 is The Hate You Give. Number 4 is The Incredibles. Uh, number 3 is uh, Creed 2. Number 2 is Black Klansman. And tied for number 1 for my favorite films of 2018 is Avengers Infinity War and Black Panther. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. That is just my opinion for my top 10, top 15 favorite films of 2018. Again, guys, this is not my best. I will be making a uh, top 10 best, and it is going to be top 10, top 10 best films of 2018. When any of the films that are on this list pop up on that list as well, you're just going to have to stay tuned and find out because I'm shooting that video right after I'm done shooting this one as well as my top 10 worst of 2018. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, please, um, oh no. Um, so that's just my opinion. Um, you know, what did you think? Have you seen any of these films? Uh, have you not seen them? Do you want to see them? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. If you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all that good stuff. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. And I made it very easy by providing links to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of my alarm going off at the end of this video and before you go don't forget that uh, my opinion slash review of my top 10 top 15 favorite films of 2018 and before you go don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery and that's just my opinion peace <laughs>